YouTube. I realize it's been a while since I've done a recommended reading video. I haven't done one since I've been at the Field Museum, which means I haven't done one in like four and a half years. So I thought it was about time to suggest some books that I've read in the last couple of years that I really enjoyed, that broadened my horizons and piqued my curiosity. And I think that you will like them as well. So that is what we are doing today. Okay, let's go. So the first two books that I want to recommend I think are great for a younger audience. The first book is E.O. Wilson's, Edward Wilson's Letters to a Young Scientist. I think this book is super important for anybody who's interested in pursuing a field of science. E.O. Wilson, he's a Harvard biologist, he studies ants, and he's one of the most important scientists of my generation, of our generation at least. If you think you're interested in, in pursuing a field of science but you're not really sure if you have all of the skills or you don't really know, this book I think will solve a lot of your anxiety or help with a lot of your anxiety um, by just giving a lot of good practical advice. So you should read this if you want to do the science thing. The other book that I want to recommend that I think is good for a little younger of an audience is this book Dinosaur Empire by Abby Howard. This is the first in three books that Abby has written and illustrated about the dinosaur empire. This one is about the Mesozoic period and it's about uh, Ronnie who was supposed to pass a, a test in school about dinosaurs and she failed miserably and then met a friend, a teacher, Miss Lernan, and Miss Lernan takes her through a time machine back in time to learn all about the different animals and plants of the Mesozoic. It's, just, it's not just about dinosaurs, she also talks about like the parasites of the insects and how they evolved concurrently at the same time. I cried at the end of it. I was emotionally moved. So you just take that for what it is. The next three books are all about natural history and various natural history museums. At, spoiler, two of them are about the Field Museum. So this book, The Snake Charmer by Jamie James, is about uh, this guy Joe Sawinski. He was a herpetologist at the California Academy of Sciences, which is in San Francisco, and it's really sad. I cried reading it, and I think it's because it goes into the perils and the challenges of doing field work. Joe Slominski was an expert in his field, knew more than pretty much anybody about venomous snakes. Uh, and it's, the book is really biographical, so it kind of goes into his life story of how he became interested in snakes and then what he did in college and then eventually getting his, his job at the California Academy. It all centers kind of on this one fateful expedition. It's a super good book, it's really important, but get a box of Kleenex because I was ugly crying at the end of it. So this book, The Lady and the Panda by Vicki Croak, uh, might be familiar to you if you watched our video, The Flapper and the Panda. It's all about Ruth Harkness, who was a woman living in New York in the 1920s and kind of became obsessed with the idea of going to China and bringing back the first live panda to the United States. Personally, I went through so many like different phases in how I felt about Ruth Harkness reading it, because on the one hand, I'm like, yeah, Ruth, like, buck all those societal norms and gender roles from the 1920s, but at the same time, I was like, no, why do you have such a sense of entitlement? And it kind of like spurred a lot of conservation problems in that area of China, but also led to a lot of new conservation efforts and uh, rules and regulations about exporting wild animals to foreign countries. The other thing that I really like about this book is that when I first started at the museum, I was walking around and noticed this panda on display with a couple of sentences about how it was the first panda brought to the United States, but didn't really know that much more about the panda. And then when I read the book, I realized how much more significant that specimen was. And I thought that was pretty cool. It made me appreciate my museum more. Along the lines of field museum science and things, uh, this is a new book by one of our curators, Lance Grandy. We've done a couple of videos with him. Uh, we did the gem video together. He showed us some cool stuff in the collection. And then we went out with him to Fossil Lake, Wyoming to excavate an Eocene lake. And this is all about curators. So if you're interested in the brain scoop and the kind of behind the scenes stories, I think you'll really like this book. Bonus cool thing about this book. Look, look at Look at that. I'm in it. There's a picture of me in the book. And there's like a little footnote. So I didn't actually like make it into the book, but I made it into the footnote of a book. So basically I'm in a book. So the last three books I want to talk about don't necessarily have to do with natural history, but they're all science-y based and I enjoyed reading all of them, including this one, I Contain Multitudes by Ed Yong. I Contain Multitudes is kind of like the next step beyond just looking at everything that we can see with the naked eye and looks into the life of bacteria and microbiomes and the mites that live in your face and uh, how we have these bacterial environments in and around us and how we don't really think about them, but they 
our how we are able to live in this really complicated world. Uh, and it's not a new field of science, but there are still so many new discoveries that are being made with advancements in technology. And so I just liked that. Thinking about bacteria as the next frontier for science. It's kind of gross. But there you go. So along the lines of talking about new frontiers in science, uh, The Poisoner's Handbook by Deborah Blum is so good. But it's about New York in the jazz age, so New York City in the 1920s, and the rise of forensic chemistry and pathology. Because up until about the early 1900s, Death by poison and murder by poison was almost impossible to detect. Nobody really knew how these poisons could be detected if somebody had died and they were just like, well, it looks like they were poisoned, but we don't know by what and we don't know how or who did it. So these two scientists, Charles Norris and Alexander Gettler, work together to develop the field of forensic chemistry. And this book, I like the way that it's set up because it sort of goes by murder by murder case and chemical poison by chemical poison to talk about the effects and how they were able to detect them. It's just super well written. And if you like a good murder mystery or a mystery at all, and it's nonfiction, then you should read that book. So the last book that I want to recommend to you, kind of along the same lines of death and people dying, wow, this is a cheerful book review day, is Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. You might also know her from her YouTube channel, Ask a Mortician. This one is about her first job working in a crematory. She wasn't just putting bodies into the crematorium. She was also like working with families and like having to go pick up bodies. And it sounds really morbid, but the thing that I like about Caitlin and the work that she does is she promotes death positivity. She really encourages that more people talk openly about death and they plan for death and they think about environmentally uh, sustainable ways of dying. And I just really appreciate her frank and candid approach to talking about the inevitable. And if you like her YouTube channel, uh, you should check out this book because it's really well written and like self-deprecating, but also really insightful. So I really liked it. We should do a video together sometime. We can talk about dead stuff. So anyway, those are some of the top books that I've read in the last year or so. But I would love to know if you have read any of these or if you have book recommendations for me. Stuff that you think that I might enjoy. I like reading and I like nonfiction and I like graphic novels about dinosaurs. Anyway, well, just let me know in the comments. Okay, goodbye. It still has brains on it.